It's important to be clear about exactly the way a perfectly competitive market works. Sometimes I'll just refer to it as a competitive market. As we said several times before, competition is the synonym for perfect competition in economic theory. You all are familiar with the middle diagram from your principles class. I have a demand curve and a supply curve. Now, from what we've done so far in this course, you understand where downward sloping demand curves and upward sloping supply curves come from. We add up the individual downward sloping demand curves. Of course, they could be upward sloping if you had a given good, but in any case, you add up the individual demand curves of the consumers and you get the market demand curve, which is here. You add up the individual supply curves from the firms and you get the market supply curve which is there. And you will recall from principles that where demand equals supply, this point here, is the mar called the market equilibrium point. Um, let me interrupt myself to point out that the word equilibrium should not be confused with the word optimum. Students often do this. Optimum, or the optimal point, is the place where the firm wants to be or where the consumer wants to be. Equilibrium is where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. And actually, no one really wants to be in equilibrium. Equilibrium is a place where they I end up being, and bad things would happen if they weren't there. But it's not a conscious choice to be in equilibrium. It is a conscious choice to be at an optimum. So optimum means the best place. And every economic agent in this neoclassical story has a goal. The consumer wants to maximize utility. The firm wants to maximize profit. And when they're doing that, they are at their optimal point. Whether or not that's an equilibrium point doesn't have anything to do with that per se. It has to do with whether quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. and no one agent controls that because the firms are doing their part in terms of the quantity supplied and the consumers are doing their part in terms of the quantity demanded but there's no one person that controls both of those and makes them equal so the presence of an equilibrium is not a conscious choice by anybody and therefore it's not an optimum uh, it may be an optimum from a social point of view, from the point of view of a social planner, that's different, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But it's, it's best at this stage to, to use equilibrium and optimum in completely different uh, ways. So, as I was saying, the equilibrium price is P star, and equilibrium quantity is Q star. Now let's see what that implies on the left for the typical firm and on the right for a typical consumer. Let's do the consumer first. For the consumer, the consumer takes prices as given and what that means is the consumer does not see the upward sloping supply curve in the middle diagram. What the consumer sees is a supply curve that looks like this. It's horizontal. Now, the consumer is wrong in thinking that that's the supply curve because it isn't. The true supply curve is what you see in the middle diagram. But the consumer believes that the price of the product, let's say the price of corn, is fixed and that nothing he can do. The horizontal axis in the right-hand diagram is Q with a C subscript for the consumer, Q, Q for quantity. And I made it a lowercase Q because now I'm saving the uppercase Q for the entire market. That's the middle diagram has capital Q's on the horizontal axis. So the right-hand diagram has a lowercase Q on the horizontal axis with the C subscript for consumer. The left-hand diagram for the firm has a lowercase Q with an F subscript for the firm. Okay, so back to the right-hand diagram. The consumer thinks of the supply curve as being horizontal because he thinks of the price of corn as being fixed, that the price of corn does not is not affected by Q sub C. Nothing that he, the consumer, does is going to change the price of corn. Now, on the basis of this incorrect assumption, the consumer decides how much corn he's going to demand. Uh, and that would be here. 
Now let's think about what happens with the firm. The firm does not see the downward sloping demand curve of the middle diagram, which is the true market demand curve. The firm, and of course here we're just talking about a competitive firm, the firm sees this demand curve. Demand equals average revenue equals marginal revenue. Now, that's not the true demand curve. The true demand curve is the one in the middle diagram. But the firm thinks that he's such a small guy that regardless of how he moves QF, he's not going to change the price of corn. Now, actually, if he set his little QF equal to one zillion bushels, then that would affect the price of corn. But he doesn't realize that. And so he counterfactually assumes that the demand curve that he sees is, is horizontal. By the way, the labels here, units, uh, price per bushel, dollars per bushel on all of these. So the firm, uh, taking that as taking the demand curve as given, decides that the best thing to do is to go to where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, as long as that's above average variable cost, and it is in here, and so the firm decides to go right there. Now the beauty of perfect competition is that if you add up all these little QF stars, for each individual firm, and they might be all different from each other, but if you add them all up, what you g get is Q star. And if you add up all these QC stars, the individual de quantity demanded by the consumers, every consumer is different and so their QC stars are different, but if you add them all up, you get capital Q star again. The reason is because the market demand curve was constructed as a sum of all these little demand curves. And the market supply curve was constructed as a sum of all these little supply curves. You know that, that marginal cost above AVC is the firm supply curve. So by the way you constructed the market demand curve and the way you constructed the market supply curve, if you're at P star, then the f firms each firm here on the left, not knowing anything about demand, in fact, the one thing it thinks about demand is wrong, <laughs> it thinks demand is flat and it isn't, they all decide collectively to produce capital Q star. And then the consumers on the right hand side, not knowing anything correct about supply, all decide to, produce, to consume their own little QC stars and you add them all up together, that also makes capital Q star. And so in equilibrium you have quantity demanded, equal quantity supplied, and then everything is great. So that's the way that the competitive equilibrium P star Q star works. It shows the way it's constructed and the way it's interpreted by a typical firm and by a typical consumer.